What's going on guys, Aziz here and welcome back to the Inter Milan career mode. If you guys have followed up to this point, um, especially the last video, uh, we finally switched the difficulty, I believe, from Legendary to Ultimate. We had a bit of struggle. So to begin the video, as you can see, we're just going through the sliders. Um, I went through Reddit, YouTube, and some other platforms. And basically, these are the sliders that I'll be playing with on the difficulty or on the Ultimate difficulty mode. Uh, moving forward, um, I will be making arrangements or just, you know, uh, filtering or uh, what's the word? Ma just messing around with the sliders just to make it a little more difficult as we go if it's too easy. Um, but as of right now, this is a difficulty as you can see sprint speed, acceleration 50, shot error 52, pass error 46, shot speed, pass speed, I mean everything. Um, these are just for me as a user, uh, but as you will see as we move forward, um, you'll start to see also the AI defending or the AI gameplay sliders. Um, I did filter that a bit more um, just to make it a little more favorable. Um, if you guys, like I said, watched the previous video, it was a complete disaster. I got cranked um, against Udinese and Cagliari. Um, obviously, it's not fun when you play against a mid to lower tier club in your league and you feel like you're playing Barcelona or you know Real Madrid or Bayern Munich um, so yeah I, th I think these these sliders are necessary to make the the career mode a little more realistic to, and also to make it more enjoyable for myself um, obviously if it's not enjoyable um, then the career mode won't be up to the standards that one I want to um, publish and two for you guys to really enjoy as you can see, shot error, we increase this one. This one's probably the most significant one, and pass error as well, 68 and 56. Um, and also shot speed. They were getting quite a number of shots on, but just the velocity of the shots itself was quite surprising. Uh, goalkeeper abilities, I think they're all the same. Positioning run frequency is 48. Um, but I'm confident. I'm confident with, the, with these sliders that... Um, it'll be more realistic um, now in this career mode we're gonna have I believe it's three games uh, we're gonna have one game against our arch rival which will be the first one coming up against AC Milan um, if you guys have followed the series yeah obviously AC Milan is in the same club the historical club that it once was you know with Kaka, Maldini you know Cafu and a number of other players that they had you know during this era uh, Gattuso, Seedorf etc um, so as much as it is a classic and they're one of our arch rivals as we go into the game, um, they're not up to the same standards as they once were. Um, and then the second game will be against Lazio, and then our last game will be against Barcelona in the Champions League game. Um, so this will be the three games. Uh, they were three fun and enjoyable games that I had um, for obvious reasons. Um, but as the career progresses, just to keep in mind as well, um, as we go to Champions League, I'll keep you guys soon. So yeah, this is where we stand right now. One win, two draws, or one win, two uh, two losses against the Cagliari and the Udinese. And then the only win that we had, I guess, was Lecce, which is, I mean, I don't think I've ever heard of that club before. It's Ante Rebic. And yeah, so the game kicks off. We have our first mm, team starting, so our first uh, starting 11. Um, our number one team and then the reason I chose to play them one obviously because they're our rivals and two it's Lukaku who gets a nice goal here and one two with Ericsson um, one is because they're our arch rivals and two because we have the Lazio game and then we have the Champions League game so I wanted to make sure that our starting lineup was well rested um, there was a couple players that I did reuse in the Lazio game but uh, they didn't really effect I mean the fatigue wasn't that bad um, as we go up 1-0 Lukaku I'm starting to enjoy Lukaku a little more as well um, I'm not used to using a big striker with strength as, as a primary uh, player up front uh, but nevertheless while Martinez develops I mean he's already 84 overall I don't know how much more developing he needs but um, yeah for now as we get another goal here so eighth minute ninth essentially 2-0 Perisic um, makes it 2-0, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm not used to that. And while Martinez develops a little more and gets to the same overall as Lukaku, 
Lukaku has been a nice filler. Um, if you did watch the first or second video of this career mode, um, I also made it known that you know we have Icardi on loan at PSG, and he cuts back at the end of the season. So it's going to be a bit of a dilemma, but we'll deal with that when the time comes. Uh, for now, we'll just enjoy these two strikers, and let's see what we can make of it. So 2-0. Perisic, his second goal of the Serie A. Surprisingly, I've uh, enjoyed using him as well. Um, I haven't. I think the only other time that I've used him in the previous FIFAs was when he played at Wolfsburg. This is many years ago. I think after he left Dortmund, he went to Wolfsburg. If I'm correct. Um, Lukaku makes it 3-0, 15th minute. Um, so these are with the new sliders, and I was quite surprised. One, because I thought it would be a little more difficult. Um, or maybe I was just really um, focused and ready to turn the table on those two losses that we had as Palatano gets a shot away. Um, but as the game progressed, especially in the second half, it did become a little more difficult. But nevertheless, I was happy with the 3-0 scoreline, especially after those two beatings that I took. I just can't seem to forget those, those two games. Uh, as they get away... Lasalt cuts it in, it a try. and Paqueta with a shot, Robertson. and we clear it. Oh, There's the Erickson. Um, yeah, so out of the new players, Thomas has gone straight into our starting 11, obviously. Spent a lot of money on him, and I've enjoyed him quite a bit. i got to admit that. Um, I've also messed around with the tactics as Paris has gets a nice shot. Off, I've uh, yeah. So the instructions I changed, and with Thomas, I've just basically told him to stay behind while we're attacking, and it gives a bit of an extra coverage for us in the middle. As Lukaku gets away, gets a shot off, a nice save by Donnarumma. Yeah, so Thomas, he's purely just a defensive midfielder, doesn't really go up, um, even like on crosses. I've told him to stay on the edge of the box. Just so we have that coverage. As they come the other way around. Sosa comes to the corner. Switches in and finally crosses it in. And they get a goal. So that's one of the other things I mentioned in the previous video. Is um, with the AI, especially under ultimate, they tend to just go into the, to the wings and cross it in. Um, one way I've... I guess managed to defend it is just to cover the wings automatically. Um, once you cover the wings, especially with your right back and left back, and force them to come in, it's a lot easier to manage. But when they're doing, you know, back and forth, and then they cross it in quickly, it's quite hard to to, to defend. Um, especially with the defenders I have. Although I have, you know, Screenar, Godin, and De Vrij as my center backs, um, it can be tough at times to switch I like using the manual switch instead of the automatic so sometimes it can get a bit uh, a bit strange and, and, and messy so yeah they made it 3-1 and uh, we came back right away Brozovic finally gets into the action so that's another player with the instructions that I've kind of messed around with and with him I've told him to get into the box whenever we're attacking and it pays off here um, that's the other thing I liked about Inter Milan. I mean, if you go back a year, they had, especially with the Croatia team that went to the finals um, against France, they had Brozovic, they had Perisic, and then they had Versalco, who is the right back for Atletico Madrid now. Um, yeah, I like, I like having players from the same nationality uh, or like an abundance of them, especially if you're like an AC Milan team, like if you had you know, three, four Brazilian players. It would totally make sense because they did add that at one point. As Kessier comes in, gets a shot off and completely misses the net. So 4-1, yeah, I was quite happy with the with the result. Uh, we had control of the ball, possession. We limited AC Milan. I mean, the number of highlights I've included with AC Milan is, is not because there weren't any highlights. Um, there were, but I mean, some of them just weren't worthy of even showing you guys. And also, we did limit them to, to the number of chances. So it was a combination of, uh, one, limiting them of chances and defending well, and two, some of the shots, like the Kessier one that I just showed you, completely misses the net. Um, I just didn't think it was worthy of showing you guys. 
So here's some stats that I went over with Thomas. As you can see, 30 out of 30 passes in the middle. Brozovic 21 of 21, and Erickson 15 out of 15. So when I had them on before I brought in Nangolan and Gagliardini, um, it was just phenomenal in the middle. No passes were off. So we went to the second game against Lazio. Um, so in the summer, I was actually traveling in Europe with one of my good friends. You've also seen him in the Procola videos that I have up on the channel, Gypsy Catcher, a.k.a. Aaron. Um, yeah, so we traveled Italy and across Italy at least. We went to Rome or Roma. We went to Florence. And then we had our intentions of going also to Milan and Venice. But unfortunately, the trip, we just didn't have enough time. Um, but yeah, one of the games that we wanted to go to was Roma against Lazio, but we were quickly advised not to go because there was some sort of um, drug problem or some sort of violence at the games. Um, apparently, one of the Lazio head headmans or you know the Southsiders or one of their clubs that they have for the fans, uh, one of them got stabbed and killed, and yeah, so we were just unfortunately advised not to go to the game so we avoided it um, but we did get to see Barcelona against Real Betis um, in Camp Nou when we were also in Barcelona which was a phenomenal game um, it was my first European soccer game that I've ever been to and uh, yeah it was really enjoyable so we Neves offside um, this game was a little more difficult than the AC Milan one for sure as it come the other way around fucking Korea so I had Matteo Bastoni right there nice tackle I started him as a center back to give my starting center backs um, Godin and screen a break and here we go just keep this in mind with this tackle right here Acerbi gets a yellow you'll see in a little bit why I told you to keep that in mind yeah so they were pretty dirty in the middle um, every time it was a one-on-one -on -one with their center backs they were constantly tackling and it was slide tackles too uh, they got a couple of yellows um, yeah, nevertheless, it was uh, quite Sampdoria the game. Yeah, so we go around Bangolan. Here we go with Neves. I know he can shoot. Bam. Finesse, top right corner. Beautiful goal. This is why we paid 32 million euros for him. Uh, he can do this. And he can also fill in for Christian Eriksen. And uh, he's young. He's only 22 years old. So he's going to develop as a, as a career mode progresses as we progress during the season. Uh, we're definitely going to need him to fill in, especially in the second team when we want to give a break to Eriksen. Um, it's either him or Nangolan, and uh, I definitely prefer Neves up front and Nangolan more of a central role. Viewpoint on it. Another view, beautiful finish. He had a hell of a game, I gotta admit that. Um, yeah, so we go up one nothing. Uh, 35th minute, we come in again, Nangolan. Try to play a 1-2, Neves. Gets another shot off and makes it 2-0. I was quite surprised at the finish there. I don't think it was going to go in, especially with the animation towards the end. So when he gets a shot off. Um, but now he has a brace. 2-0. 37th minute. And we're pretty comfortable at this point. Um, I did play off a bit after this. Um, try to keep more of a possession. Contain them. Uh, not give up too many chances. But it is quite difficult with a Lazio team that has Immobile, Luis Alberto, Joaquin Correa. You know, they had uh, Lucas Yeva, they bought Ducure in, and they had Candreva, who I sold them to, sold them as well, to, to Lazio for 12.5 million euros. Second goal, second of the game. 45th minute, here's Lazaro, another player that I really Sanchez enjoyed using. And then we had Sanchez on the right, the left was Correa, he crosses it in, and Neves another chance, but he just completely misses it. Goes over the net, so that was the first half. 2-0 for Inter Milan over Lazio. Here's Decore. Excellent player for Watford. Unfortunately, Watford are in the... He gets another chance there. They're in a relegation battle. And I'm not too sure what's going to happen with the EPL. Um, if they're going to just announce the end of it. Um, we'll play some more games. Um, but as of right now, I guess Liverpool would win it. But there's speculation that they would just veto or void the season. And therefore, they would have to wait another year before they can try to win another title. So here's why I told you to keep in mind with the Cherby. Ruben Neves. It's a little karma back at a Cherby. See if we can see a replay. So yeah, he runs into him, injures him, and he has to come off. And it's replacement 
Unfortunately, I looked at this. You can't see who comes on and who goes off. It says undefined. I did some research on that as well. And online, a lot of people are just saying that um, it's some problem to do with the update. And EA should be fixing it soon. As Martinez gets a goal. That's another player I really want to make sure succeeds at the club is Martinez. Like I mentioned before, I've had him in my previous careers. And he's put in a number of goals. I think the most I've scored in one season with him is 55 or 59, something like that. As he gets away, shrugs the defender off. The replacement for Cherby, number 93, so he can get his name in. Vardo, I think his name is. Vavro, yeah. But he comes on and he doesn't, uh, he doesn't let it down. He gets a yellow eventually. With another tackle as we come off 3 0. Martinez, sweet, sweet feed to Lazaro and one times it in. We go 4 0. So it's pretty comfortable at this point. I was also concerned uh, with the fact that, that you know, I didn't mess around with the sliders, that I would definitely need to make some more changes to make it a little more difficult. Um, but then nevertheless, the, the, the game was more competitive. Um, it was a combination of the legendary and the ultimate difficulty. It was somewhere in the middle. It wasn't as difficult as the ultimate with no sliders, but it wasn't as easy as that legendary. Is there you go. Maybe we can see his name now. Yeah, there you go. Vavro. Dennis Vavro comes in for a turby, gets a yellow. So they continue their dirty play. And that was a game. So 4 0 against Lazio. It was a follow up to the 4 1 0 against AC Milan. Really happy. Six points. Takes us up to nine on the season out of a possible 15. So we're making progress. We're still, I think, fifth or sixth at this point. Neves with a brace. Martinez and Lazaro. Five minutes apart. Really blow the game. So we go in, fast forward. Sim the Sam Doria game. Politano and Correa with the goals, Barella and I go on with yellows and Erickson came on as a sub. So I'll be continuing to do this. I will continue to sim the games that I don't think are worthy of playing. Um, for obvious reasons, I just don't think it's worth my time to, to, to play these uh, lower tier table you know, teams. What I like to do usually when I do my own careers is to play against top six teams. So that could be top six teams currently in real life in the standings or it could be top six teams in the career mode i know there's you know odd times where you have for example um let's see if you say let's take the epl is probably the best example um let's see like sunderland i mean they're in diff two but maybe bournemouth you know bournemouth top four three quarters of the way in the season um so I like to play those kind of games. There has to be a reason why they're in top four. Um, and just kind of guess you just test out different teams. Play against different teams, see what they're about. So this is the game against Barcelona. The first game against uh, Sparia Prague or something. I'm not too sure who's the other player, the other team in our, uh, in our, in our group. Um, so I played the first game. We won 4-1, but unfortunately... Um, Something to do with the Elgato. I've been having issues with the Elgato and, 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 and the capture card. Um, so I wasn't able to, to get that uploaded for you guys or included in this. But we did went 4-1. And this is Barcelona. So they, they were uh, pretty competitive. This is a competitive game. Here you go, SLA. This Perisic gets a shot off. Just misses the net. Um, I mean, Barcelona in the game. Not only do they spend a lot of money, but they already have an amazing team to start with. Um, and they brought in their, their starting 11, their strongest 11. Um, but we were going to back down. Palatano gets the ball here. Looking for a cross. Gives it to Moses. Back to Palatano. And Thomas. Brozovic gets through. And then Lukaku off the crossbar. And then they attempt to clear it. Lenglet. Passes it back to Ter Stegen. And if that's not one of the easiest goals you'll see, um, I don't know what is. Um, I think that maybe has something to do with the pass errors 
on the on the AI or the CPU that I that I adjusted, but I mean, I've only adjusted it by two, so it's up down to 48 from 50. So I don't know if that would have such a drastic change. But then, nevertheless, Lukaku tugs it away with his right foot, makes it one nothing early on. Bad mistake from Barcelona. We don't really have to do much there except keep the pressure on. You know, don't give up on the play. Yeah, one nil. Lukaku, that is his first, third. You have a Champions League goal. We put in Perisic here. Back to Brozovic, Eriksson. Completely wide. That was more closer to the corner than it was to the net. Another angle. It looks like it was deflected. Or maybe not. By PK. Uh, here's Thomas in the middle. Thomas had a very strong game once again. Then he completed like 40 out of 40 passes or something like that. And this is the goal of the episode. Such a tight space. Finesse from Ericsson. As I mentioned... We need somebody capable of replacing him in, and Neves is going to be that guy. We also had another finesse shot of his own in the previous game. There we go, a nice little deep between three players. Bam, beats Ter Stegen, top right corner. Amazing, amazing finish from him. And he falls as the shot goes off. That makes it 2-0. 45th minute ended the... The first half, Messi trying to make something happen. Rakitic. Brings it back into the middle to Rakitic. Messi. Suarez, well, pass after pass, Suarez crosses it in. We clear it, and that's the first half. So 2 0 against Barcelona. I was quite surprised. Um, nevertheless, they were attacking. They had the possession for most of the first half. I was just kind of sitting back and just trying to counterattack. We kept this man, one of the best players in the world. If not the best. Quite contained. Come in in the second half. Erickson. There's Thomas again. He's really involved in the middle. I do really enjoy using that guy who just kind of sits back in the middle of the field. Erickson. And he puts through. Brozovic. Once again. Just like the Lazio game. Brozovic comes in. Cuts inside. It seems like the instructions that I've implemented into our team is, is working because the players are starting to move around a little more um, and actually making runs. With the wingers, I've told them, I think one side is to stay wide and the other one to cut in. The right side, I think, is stayed wide and the left one is to cut in because Correa will be on the left and also Perisic. So I want them to cut in with the right foot. And then on the left, it's going to be either Sanchez, who I just want to use as crossing in. I know, you know, just if you follow his career... He's a guy who kind of cuts in into the middle. I mean, he plays striker, I think, a bit too at Arsenal, but nevertheless, they come the other way. Messi, nice little one-two with Rakitic. And they get save from Andanovic, and then they get the rebound in, and they make it 3-1, 65th minute. At this point, I did not want to concede another goal, and I knew at the same time that Barcelona was going to come in full on attack. So I was going to play a little more defensive. I didn't change the tactics. I didn't go defensive or ultra defensive. Um, but I did keep the ball you know, moving around and, and try to keep as much possession as I could. Hold them off. So it was a little bit different than the first half strategy that we had, which was to let them have the ball and, and try to counterattack. In this half, it was, especially after they made a 3-1, they continued to attack. There's Messi now from the right. He's on the left moments ago. Nice save from Andanovic. Rocket just couldn't get really much on it. 77th minute. Lukaku. Perisic. Napolitano. Now back into the middle. Lukaku with a nice shot. He gets saved right at Ter Stegen. And then 85th minute. They come on a little more. And this was, I mean, I don't know if you guys have experienced this too, but sometimes in just the last five minutes, you just can get the ball to your feet. And there you go. Dembele with a nice shot. Handanovic bails us out again. Basically, this is how the game ended. We beat Barcelona. You know, we beat Lazio in the last game. We also beat Milan. Uh, really happy with the results. We bring on Correa for the last few minutes. But yeah, the, I mean, that was basically the end of the game. Uh, I was really happy with the results. We made some progress in the league. 
Uh, we've made some progress now in the Champions League. And uh, we'll continue to do that and continue to sim the games that we don't need to play. Uh, with that being said, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Turn that notification bell on. If you have any comments, questions, anything you want me to do in the career, any suggestions, please comment below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.